What's up, y'all? This is Bachelor Niffy. Join the Pod Jerky crew in this episode as they talk about their podcast setup skills. Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of Pod Jerky. I'm Director Awesome. And I'm Master Impressive. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to create your own podcast. Everybody thinks that you can just plug in a couple of mics, push a record button, and off you go. But let me tell you, there are a lot of things that you have to do in order to get a podcast started. There are a lot of podcasts out there that people do actually just hit record and just you know, throw up a bunch of garbage and stuff like that. And you can barely hear the audio or the audio is very off. Let me tell you how many things we've been through just to get this podcast up and running. So this all started off during the Christmas break because we're in the education system. I was, I kind of got bored. So I ordered a couple of mics off of Amazon, kind of took a picture of them, sent them over to Master Impressive and said, podcast ready. And his response back to me was, hey, why not? Let's do it. So we came up with this idea of doing a podcast because we actually meet up every morning before work and we kind of shoot the shit. You know, we have some good conversations and stuff and said, hey, we should just start recording this stuff. So this is what we're doing. Just in order to start this up, took a lot of research, research, development, yeah, going through all the reviews online, Google, YouTube, all the blogs, all the reviews on Amazon. There's a lot of stuff to weed through, especially in terms of equipment or which social media platforms you're going to use, your podcast name, which mics to get, which software to use, which is also called digital audio workstations. So DAWs is what it's commonly referred to. There's a lot of things to look at and you can't just take the internet at its word. So if everybody's shilling a particular product, it doesn't mean that that particular product is right for you. Right. And we found that in our case, we were able to get an old stereo mixer from Director Awesome's neighbor. We did look into a few microphones and decided to go with a brand that a lot of people were looking at and purchased, and they've turned out to be pretty good. So well, you let us know in the comment section and let us know how the mics are sounding for you guys. Yeah, but so far, so good. Everything sounds pretty clear. There's There have been a lot of issues with, for example, the specific types of software running on the Mac or the PC. We had to go through each problem as it comes up. So let's just take a brief run through. I guess of how we we got this going so the first two mics that i had purchased on amazon we returned those mics and we purchased these other better mics that we're using right now and we decided that we were going to use a small room in a unknown place uh, as our studio the secret layer there's a secret layer here that we're uh, recording in right the now. pod jerky you know? cave if you will so i mean there there's so many things that you, you have to come up with like we had to pick a domain that we were going to be able to use Picking a name was like pulling teeth. I mean, how many names did we come up with for oh, that, this show? That took a long and time. We we would bounce them off each other, and then you go and you do a Google search for it just to see if the name's taken. Sometimes the name is taken, sometimes it's not. But then you hit like Facebook or you hit an Instagram, and they're actually taken up on on those social media platforms, even though it's not coming up on Google. So I just wanted to add that we were checking out the names on. Google and a lot of other search engines, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Instagram. We were going through everything. We were looking at variations of names. We were looking at names that were close and maybe were talking about the same kind of topics. So all the stuff you have to consider and then at a certain point, you just have to say, okay, well, we're too close to other people's sandbox and you just have to let it go and then you have to start from scratch. Well, the one thing you don't want to do when choosing a name is come anywhere near someone else's name because when people are doing a search, they may mistake another podcast That's for right. your podcast. So they're actually subscribing to somebody else's podcast when you want them to, to subscribe to yours. Right? It's never so, a good thing. You no. can't have other people get paid. You yeah. got to get paid, right? So at the end of the day, I think it was you that came up with this name for Pod Jerky, which we actually threw out into the test market and uh, people actually really liked the name. So we did stick with it. And then from there, what we had to do was come up with a logo. Now, this is all your uh, specialty. I, I, you know, I'm not artistically inclined or anything like that. So 
Um, Master Impressive here is the one that did all the artwork for the show that you'll see on our social media channels that you'll see on YouTube and stuff like that. Where did you come up with those ideas for our, our logo and our artwork? I used my graphic design training. I, I put it to good use. And I just wanted to mention that with the, the pod jerky name, it has multiple meanings. And you guys need to hang around for a while to, to see what those multiple meanings are. So if you're going to be looking at doing a podcast with somebody else, if you're doing a solo podcast, this is fine. You're going to be doing all the work on your own, mm -hmm. right? So if you're doing it with somebody, with a group of people, you all have to bring something to the table, right? We have Master Impressive right now who is taking care of the artwork. He's doing a lot of the editing. He's learning more of the programs that we didn't know anything about yet right now. All the tricks, um, all the secrets, yeah. all the shortcuts. I mean, shortcuts, only one of us has the equipment at the a time. The back doors. I'm trying to reach out where to the social media to, I guess, artists. Like we're trying to book some guests onto the show. I'm getting a few responses for that. We're booking, sorry, not booking. We are actually talking to some Canadian music artists that are allowing us to use their music in a future episode. That's going to be um, some great content coming that up. That is going to so be a guys, really good episode. You guys need to hang around up. for that because it's going to be really good. You kind of have to get their permission, although it's kind of widely known that you actually can use it and no one will say anything unless you're monetizing it. Right now, we're not monetizing this show at all, although there there are hopes that we do in the future. Well, for, uh, for sure. I mean, yeah. right now, we're just doing this just because we're, we're going with it, see where this ends up. And the main reason that we're doing the show is just to share our knowledge insights insights yeah. our experiences the things that we talk about every day off the air that's what we want to put on the air because we know that a lot of people are talking about the same things and it's pretty interesting to hear what's going through other people's minds and you know that's what we're doing and hopefully you guys find the content entertaining and you enjoy the show we're, we're putting a lot of work into it the other thing that you want to think about when you're starting a podcast as well is do you want to have a specific topic that you just want to discuss so let's say you want to talk about aliens is your entire podcast the entire like how many episodes you go through is it going to be strictly about aliens and that's it we decided that we want to go on multiple subjects and nothing is going to be untouched here we can talk about anything and everything so this is something that you want to decide on and see you know what interests you and what you really want to talk about so next what you really want to concentrate on is your equipment that you're using for the show right now we are just using a mixer i guess with the two mics mm -hmm. and the mac or the laptop or whatever we're using right now and you really want to focus on getting the right quality sound for the podcast. You want to have your levels, I guess your volume levels, your master levels, your input levels. You want to have those all at a good level where you're not getting any hissing or buzzing or anything in the background. So you're constantly doing a recording, doing a test recording, checking on the uh, sound of that to make sure it's coming through clear. And then you could actually record a whole episode and have to redo the whole thing because you hear another hissing in the background, even though you just did a test and you just checked that out, right? Or you might have issues with one track versus the other track and it just becomes a nightmare to edit. And then you just, at a certain point, you just say, okay, screw it. I'm going to start over again. You fix the problem. You look at the levels. You look at your gain. Basically, what you do with the audio recording is you get it from minus 9 to minus 12. That's sort of the sweet spot for the gain. And from there, you look at your master volume. You look at your mic volume. So you can have the mixer controlling your, your levels, your volumes. You can do that with your mic. You can do that with your digital audio software. There's there, a whole bunch of inputs that sure. are going into the audio recording software. So you have to check all of that, right? So you want to make sure that you're getting a clear, crisp sound coming out before you do anything. Tell everybody how much fun it is to, to go through, especially on the PC side of things, to get the audio to work properly. And then, for well, example, if you have, we're, we're using Audacity most of the time. So you have to figure out the issues with Audacity in conjunction with all the issues, workarounds and problems with the PC, setting up the audio properly on that, the inputs, the outputs. Where then your you, gains may be too sure. high on the actual laptop uh, as opposed to on your mixer. Make sure your mics are on. Yeah, we actually recorded <laughs> a, a part of an episode without having our mics on at all. And we're like, so, what, what's going on here? Yeah. Why isn't this working? Oh, that's right. Dumbass moment. You want your audio to come out crisp and clear. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts because I have quite the drive to get into work. And you take for granted what you're listening to. You don't realize all the work that goes into it behind the scenes, right? You don't think about like how long did 
did that episode take to record? Mm -hmm. Did they just hit record because you know they're professionals at this now? Did they just hit record? But some people do that. They just they record off their phone and they just upload the audio just like that. And sometimes I think that's almost easier because if you just go in with little to no expectations and you just throw the stuff out there, sometimes it's more organic. Yeah, and you just you just go with it. But then also, if you want better quality audio later on, it's too late. You already. But you know what? You and I are both perfectionists, and we want everything to come out nicely so i mean we've already recorded two episodes i believe you went home and you had a three yeah you had to listen to it and what happened you emailed me you said this sounds like shit let's get rid of it and i said you know what let's just dump that episode let's move on to the next one that we had planned and let's see where we can go from there. I mean, you got a lot of shit to deal with when recording a podcast. So keep that in mind when doing that. I, there was another thing actually sure, that I wanted to, to talk about too about the microphones is I have a real, real bad habit. Yes, of, you do. Uh, of uh, <laughs> fidgeting around, I guess, when uh, Fidget we're master, yes. So Maybe that'll uh, be your new tag. We were doing a, 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 a recording of a podcast and... Every time my recording went on, your recording came through nice and clear, and then my track came on, all you could hear was a little bit of ruffling in the background, and you could hear a little bit of almost like a wind blowing kind of thing, and we couldn't figure out what it was until I realized I am just like my grandmother, and I am just like my father, and if we're sitting at a table, even, you know, they start to roll up a placemat or whatever... I was playing with the microphone stand and didn't even realize it. Good job, Until Master Impressive said... Don't screw around with Stop your mic. Stop fucking with the mic. <laughs> this is what is picking up the audio, right? So we don't have these mics on, uh, what do you call them? The, the boom arms. The boom arms. Yeah. Uh, we just have them on a microphone stand that's sitting on a table. So if you're to touch the table or you're to touch the mic, it's going to pick up the sound. They're very sensitive, right? So I was playing around a lot with that. So it kind of ruined one of the episodes that we were recording. So. It did sound almost like when in the background, you know, when it does, yeah. When you got those reporters in the field yeah, and they don't have the, the mic sock on, it sounded like that. It didn't sound good at all. And I mean, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this properly. We want to do things right the first time. So if we can go back and fix any issues, we will. But the easiest thing to do is... Hey, record all, and go, right? Get all your levels set prior to the recording. Make sure everything works. Don't take any of the tech for granted. Yeah. Never do that. If you think the mic is on, check it Double again check because that. it's probably off. If you think the track is recording, check to see if the track is recording. Make sure your cables are working properly. Make sure your power source is good because some people have had issues where they might have some dirty electricity so there might be some static in the signal and that actually affects your your laptop that affects your microphone and that comes out as a buzz or a whining or a hiss to get rid of that is pretty difficult sometimes it's not worth it sometimes you can get rid of it but it's just an extra step that you have to take in editing and it just chews up too much of your time so the best thing to do is everything set up properly that basically allows you to not edit anything or very little later on and you can get your podcast episodes out quickly okay now the next thing that you want to kind of try and concentrate on is your nervousness the arms um, the ahs the souls so the as it were maybe the way we um... started this was okay you know what we're both talkers right we can both talk up a storm oh, uh, we talk we, great off the mic when but when it comes mic, to the recordings know, they we, go right out the window we put the mic in front of us and it was almost like we froze And it's going to take getting used to, I guess. But I mean, we froze on the mic basically just because you want that perfection to come out. And then you think that it's not. So you freeze, you give the, uh, you give the ums and you know, whatever it is. I'm probably still doing it right now. You probably notice it. And if you haven't, I've just pointed it out to you. So you're going to be listening for it. Wait, we should, we should do a podcast episode on how to talk properly. And then the entire episode will be not talking properly. Yeah, It'll yeah. just be a complete gong show. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess it wasn't nerves, but it was more trying to get that perfection down. Right. So mm. I even said to my wife, I don't know what happened. I don't, I just really, the stupid computer just made a ding there. So uh, okay, it's time to know. recycle that PC. <laughs> um, my, my wife, I made a comment to my wife the other night and said like I don't know what the hell happened I just I couldn't get the words out while we had the recording equipment in front of us so I can only imagine how hard it is when you're newer to this now because I I, we've we've done a few episodes now so we're getting a a lot more used to this now Um, but at the end of the day people who've been doing this forever 
are professionals. You got sure. Joe Rogan who goes on and boom, he can shoot the shit all day long. But with us, we're we're trying to get this out. Well, it's like a it's, tap for those guys, you know, right? They turn it on, it yeah, just and that's it. Comes right? flying out of their mouth. Yeah. They don't stop. They record. Boom. And, I'm gonna go have a beer. Have have a nice day. And that's our goal by the end of all of this, right? So right now we're still uh, learning. We're trying to give you tips on how to start a podcast while it's still fresh in our heads because uh, we are still in the startup stages of this. And I also wanted to add, we might be putting on some videos on our YouTube channel showing our setups, yep. how we do things, what we've learned, what not to do. We don't have all the answers. We're, we're starting off small. We're not getting into the, the thick weeds. So for example, you have multiple guests, so you're doing... Well, you're going to need a multiple channel mixer. Right, multiple channel that. mixer. Then you have Discord. Then you have Skype. And then you have and if you want splitters. Add, if you want to add audio into it, say from like a, another device from your phone, sure. you need to have that hooked up to the mixer or to the computer as well for mm -hmm. an input. Yeah, and then you have that music playing afterwards. You don't want to have to edit this music in after. You want to do this all in one shot just to make the editing easier. Yeah, right? there, so, there's there are a lot of things to consider. And it can be complicated. It can be tricky. But if you practice, if you go through it, do a trial run. The good thing about having other people working with you on the podcast is that you go to your strengths. So if somebody's better in tech, then they're going to get the job done quicker. They're going to have a different perspective. They can find out little tricks or they can have have a plan on how to use things easier and in a manner that just makes your podcast experience a hell of a lot easier and let me tell you that takes away the stress that frees you up that opens things up so your your back and forth is very easy going you don't have to try as hard and then what happens is when you're not thinking about the audio quality then what happens is you start having a, a normal conversation instead if you're worrying about everything you're too guarded you're wondering if things are going to be going wrong and if you start thinking like that then what's going to happen is your you drop your conversation the flow will suffer your spontaneity will suffer and that's pretty much it that's that's what i think you have to look out for now you also want to plan your episodes out as well now we're not saying specifically to write your episodes out. I mean, because just but, reading. But we from, are. Well, Jot I mean, down some notes. We write down notes. We take notes and, and uh, have like little point form stuff in front of us so that we, we know what subjects we want to talk about and what points we want to make across that subject. But I wouldn't suggest reading straight from a paper. Sure. Because uh, it comes off as too robotic and, and people will be able to tell that you're reading. So Unless you're really good and you're adept at doing that. Some people can basically have their notes in front of them. Oh, I read it word just, for word and it sounds sure. like it's a play right it sounds yeah. like it's you know some kind of professional like pod jerky or whatever masterpiece it is. audio theater yeah. don't worry <laughs> yeah yeah so we I know. mean those are those are some of the tips that we have for starting a podcast um that's there i am with the ums again uh <laughs> you're fired um, yeah so those are the tips that we have for creating a podcast if you have any questions you can always contact us on social media you can leave us uh, comments anything like that we'll be more than willing to help you out i think we'll also have some future episodes that'll go into coming up with the proper logo logos that work easily with the social media platforms and the visual component i think is really important if you just use the default pictures that you get from your podcast hosts, your providers, I don't think that does any justice to your brand. You guys are all going to be knighted right now. For pod jerky listeners, you're all going to be referred to as jerks from now on. All right. So and I can see you guys all wearing the shirts called jerks, right? It's just going to say jerks on it. Jerks 316. We got a whole bunch of brands oh, coming yeah, up. Yeah, we'll go with yeah. that. The merch, the swag yeah. is going to be coming pretty soon. It looks really slick. I've been doing some testing and the people that I've been showing the stuff do really like it. And I think you all will as well. We do have some more interesting content coming up in the future. We have an episode on autism. We've got an episode on... That'll be an uh, eye-opener to that, many people. That's actually might be a two-parter because we've got a lot of content to go over. It's not just going to be for educators. It's going to be for parents. And then we're also going to tie that into our special needs Facebook group. So right. we're going to be tying our platforms together, our social media platforms. And then if anybody needs any advice or direction with their special needs children, or if they just want to find out more about what special needs is all about, then we'll give you our take and our frontline experiences. And there is a lot of information to take in. So 
I mean, listening into this podcast episode about autism is going to be very helpful for you. We see what works, what doesn't work. We can give people a direction, an outlet to find the information that they need that will help them in their particular case, make things easier for them. And I think that's it. We're going to wrap up this episode. And again, we have the episode on autism coming up. We've got an interview with a Japanese jiu-jitsu artist coming up. And we have a really funny episode coming up with a local comedian. Also just doing a couple of, uh, of clips of some uh, really good comedians that we enjoy watching. Probably do an episode on ghosts and goblins and leprechauns and unicorns. <laughs> you know, the fun stuff. So Sure. Sounds yeah, good. Yeah. So we hope you all tune in to the next uh, few episodes that are going to be coming up shortly. And now on to the next half of the show. So we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment that you are needing to actually start a podcast. And first off, you actually want to start with a microphone, a laptop, and a mixer. So those are the three main things that you actually want to have. And with our research we did, we looked up a couple of microphones. And I actually purchased one and tried it out and didn't like the sound quality of it. So I actually ended up returning it and getting a new one. And Master Impressive and I both actually did a little further research into what a better microphone would actually cost us. So we ended up getting the Samson Q2U off of Amazon, and that retails for about $89 a piece. And it's actually a podcast kit. So it comes with a microphone stand, comes with the microphone, the mic sock, a uh, USB cable, and an XLR cable. The XLR cable is actually used to hook into your mixer, and the USB one can be plugged right into your computer. Now, the USB is okay to use as long as you are recording as one person and not using it for a group of people doing a podcast, two or more. We're going to actually get into the mixer now. And we found that we purchased a mixer off of Amazon as well. And it was the Behringer mixer. It wasn't a mixer. It was the audio interface, the USB okay. audio interface. Was that a four or a six? It was the four, I think. Four. The next thing that you're going to want to purchase or look into is actually a mixer or an audio interface. And what we started off with was an audio interface that we purchased off of Amazon, and it was from Behringer. And this could handle up to four separate guests. So you could have yourself, another host, and up to two other guests as well. Now, when we tried this out, we did the XLR cables and we did the, I believe it was the quarter inch cables as well that were actually allowed to attach to this. That is correct. Yes. Yeah. So basically the input port, it serves as two functions for the TRS and the XLR. So. Right. So we tried that out and we didn't really get the sound quality that we were looking for. And I spoke to a neighbor and uh, he's actually really good with uh, technical stuff. So he actually had a older mixer that he used when he used to DJ at weddings. And he said, here, give this a try, see if this works out. And it actually came out pretty good with the sound uh, right now because we have to record over Skype. Uh, we're just using our USB mics to get our sound out right now. But with the mixer, you could actually function up to six different guests at the same time. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the XLR capability. However, we did buy the actual cables that you could change the XLR into a TRS quarter inch uh, attachment to plug into the back of the mixer. Now, the mixer has control of the... Um, audio input volume. It has a master volume. Uh, you could actually pan left and right, which will give you, I believe, the sound into uh, different sides and allow you to record into different tracks as well. And has an equalizer on it as well. So it does serve its function if you are just a beginner in terms of starting a podcast. Now, once you get into uh, your podcast a little bit deeper and you seem to be making a little bit of money, then that's probably where you want to upgrade your equipment. Now, with all the cables and uh, attachments that you're going to need, you're probably looking at, if you're looking at spending a, a low chunk of change for two people, between the two people, you're probably looking at spending about 100 or sorry, 250 to $300 to get your startup equipment. And that's assuming that you already have a laptop. Um, we do get into... Um, free recording programs as well. We're going to touch on that in a few minutes. And uh, that's the program that we use right now is Audacity. And it actually serves its purpose for what we're doing right now. Uh, in terms of cables, you're looking at maybe an XLR cable, USB cable will come with the mic. 
Uh, you're looking for quarter inch attachments. So if they want to use the TRS, then you can use that. I have another couple of cables that I use to hook up my phone to the actual computer so that we can actually record music or do a actual phone call uh, interview if we have to. You'll find out later on in episodes that we do have to do this right now due to the whole lockdown situation that we're in. And uh, we're going to have some phone call interviews. So uh, you might want to buy some of those cables. So you can actually reach out to us on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube channel and find out what exactly it is that you need. We do have videos posted on YouTube as well to show you how to actually set up all this equipment. So now we're going to get into the technical aspect of everything, and I'm going to let Master Impressive uh, take it away with that. Before I get into that, though, I wanted to mention that we also looked at the Zoom H6, and basically that's just an all-in-one device that uh, you can plug in your, uh, I think, four XLR mics and you can save to an SD card and then you know once you're done with the recording you take the SD card out and then you pop it into your computer save it to audacity you can edit it and then you know publish your episode that way the only reason why we didn't go with the h6 right now is because it's pretty expensive and i think it's overkill for what we're doing right now and i guess we'll eventually get into the the higher end uh, devices but we're going to hold off on that for now well the other problem i found with the h6 too was that because it was on a, on a micro sd card or an sd card um, the fact that you might lose that information when transferring it in and out of the machine and transferring it into your computer. So that's a little bit uh, what I was worried about. I'm sure it's pretty safe, uh, not diminishing the, uh, the quality of that particular product, but I had a little bit of worries about that as well. So do your research on that as well. What some people are doing with backups is they have the the main recording going into one Zoom H6 device, and then they have another uh, Zoom device, could be an H6 or I think an H4, doing a backup recording just in case one goes down. They still have the recording being saved to the other device. So that's what yeah. some people are doing that we've heard about. There's other ways that you can backup your recording while you're doing your actual recording, but... That's a whole other episode. Yeah. Well, those are really good, too, to take out on the road, right? So say sure. you're doing uh, interviews mm. out on the road, you're doing like a convention or something like that, then those are those are handy to have. But right now, because we're in this uh, situation that we're in with this COVID-19 thing, uh, I'm perfectly comfortable sitting at the table with my laptop and just doing some recordings from there. Sure, yeah, because, yeah. you know, they're classified as a field recorder, but I don't think anybody's going into the field right now. And if they are, it better mm. be just for a walk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Or okay. put it on the end of a broomstick and, and hold it out to the person, right? Yeah, there's yeah. your boom arm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll get into the podcast recording setup on the PC side. So this is basically a checklist that new users or people that are thinking of getting into podcasting should look at because these are some of the issues that we've had to go through to figure out how to get our equipment to work properly. And I'll just get into it right now. So first off, you got to make sure with your PC that it's in a healthy running state. And you can do that by checking out your device manager first. You got to make sure that all of your hardware is working properly, that everything is recognized. For those that don't know, you don't want those little yellow exclamation sure. marks there. Make yeah. sure your operating system is up to date. Check for viruses and basically check the device manager for any, any problems. And you can access the device manager by right-clicking the Windows Start icon in the bottom left of the screen. And then you left-click the device manager. Now, the main areas that you want to look out for are the Audio Inputs and Outputs tab, the Sound, Video, and Game Controllers tab, and the USB tabs. In these particular tabs, there are a lot of options that you need to look at because if your mic is USB and it doesn't have the proper drivers, then that's where you would go to check if there was any issues with the USB drivers under that Universal Serial Bus Controllers tab. Now, to double check these tabs, all you have to do is make sure that everything is plugged in properly and you're testing your mic and related cables and making sure that your PC can detect all the hardware. If you have problems, that might mean faulty hardware or if the drivers are not up to date, cables being plugged into wrong audio ports, so on and so forth. And I've also experienced one weird situation where I used a power cord 
I can't remember if I got it off another device, but uh, I plugged it in and without knowing it, that was causing, I guess, voltage problems with the PC and it didn't allow one of the uh, internal devices to function properly. Eventually I figured it out, swapped that power cord and then it worked properly. So that's another thing to keep an eye out for. So basically you just want to have your cables that come with the equipment, use those cables. They're designed to be with that certain piece of equipment, right? So. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. But in this case here, you know, power cords all look the same. So I just didn't even notice that I was using the wrong one. But like I said, fortunately, I was able to get that figured out. Okay, let's take a look here. What's next in my checklist? Uh, okay, so make sure that your uh, devices are plugged in properly. Cables where they should be is the mic or audio interface. Your external device that you connect your microphones and instruments to, is it being recognized? If it is, then you proceed. If not, you double check the, the following steps. Take your time and go through everything. So these are some of the troubleshooting best practices that we've used. And uh, it served us well because, like I said, we've gone through a ton of problems. Absolutely. Both, yeah. both, both with the PC hardware side of things, the mics, the audio interfaces, the software, Audacity, online services, everything. So we... We've been running through the hoops here, so we've we've learned quite a bit. Trial and error, right? Trial and error. Yeah. yeah. So the first main area that you want to look at when you're doing the troubleshooting after you get the hardware and the, the cables and everything plugged into the right ports is allowing your system to see and use your mic. And that would be under settings, privacy tab, and then you go to your microphone tab. You need to make sure that your access is on allow apps to access your microphone and allow desktop apps to access your microphone. Now with the voice activation tab, if your situation requires it, turn it on. Otherwise that can be off. And again, that's under settings, privacy tab and voice activation tab, because I think there's a few apps that might need that. And you just have to see in your particular situation, what you need to have on or off. Okay, taskbar. If you look at your audio icon, the sound settings. If you right click the speaker in the taskbar, you open the sound settings and check your output device, master volume, your input device, and your advanced sound options. What you're going to need to do is, like I said, if everything's working except the inputting of your audio into the system, then this is what you would have to look at. Another area that could possibly give you trouble is controlled folder access and services. And these are some considerations to look out for. So remember that you need to use an admin account to give access to your mic, your USB audio interface, third-party software, all that stuff. So if you're not using your admin account, you need to. So let's go on to the control folder access. So that's under Windows Security Ransomware Protection and manage ransomware protection option. That's where you would find the controlled folder access. And that could give you big problems. If you turn that on, it might block Audacity or any other processes in your audio recording chain that need to access your system files, hard drive, or memory in whatever particular way that they need to. Sometimes these apps or these uh, hardware devices do things in a roundabout sort of way and then the system might think it's some sort of uh, virus. So you really have to be careful about that. System services. If you've turned off any system services, for example, Xbox system services, and you try to record in-game play with your mic or use the Xbox services recording features for other tasks, then most likely they won't work. Many services rely on each other, so you really have to be careful what you turn off. And if you don't know what you're doing, you don't touch anything. Just leave everything default and just go from there. Now, if your user account is too crazy and chaotic and there's too many things to troubleshoot, you don't know what's going on, create a new user account, start fresh. Leave all the settings in default mode and use it that way to see if you're able to accomplish your task. Okay, that's really important. And always remember, if your system is functioning properly and you don't have any issues, before you do anything, create a restore point. I'm not going to get into the whole setup of restore points, but make sure you do a restore point and then move on to your next step. Because what happens is if you screw up your system or you install a driver or there's an app setting and it just like flakes out your system, then you could go back to that restore point where everything was working properly and then just go from there instead of and reinstalling. And if you don't, 
we've warned you. <laughs> you know, you're you're pretty much uh, up shit's creek there. Uh, if you do install something new and then uh, you can't go back to what you originally had. Because then you're going to have loads of fun reinstalling Windows and that, I'm sorry, no thanks, don't want to yeah. do that. Too no. much time wasted doing all that crap. Let's say you have all that figured out, your PC works and is up to date, you can do a quick run through. Are your mics working? Digital audio interface recognized? Yes. And I'm assuming that these are all yes. So we're just going to pretend that yes, they are working. And then we're going to move on to the next point. So mic working? Yes. Digital audio interface working? Yes. Audio levels correct? Yes. Choosing your input, which is your mics, and your output, which would be your speakers. That would be either through external speakers or through built-in speakers of your computer monitor. So everything's working there. Yes, sure. Then you go to your digital audio workstation. And that's basically what you use to bring your audio recording into your PC, the software. And in this case here, we use Audacity. So Audacity is considered a digital audio workstation. Okay. Now, before we go any further, once mm -hmm. you have all of these settings set up, is this a one-time setting that you have to change? You're not doing this every time you turn on the computer and set up your audio for the podcast. All of these settings will save and you'll be able to use these settings every time that you use your computer, right? If you're just using a particular setup and you just have to leave it like that, then you can do all these steps once. You probably don't even have to do all these steps, but if you need to do these steps, you do this once, make sure everything is working, and then you go from there. Now, if you need to tweak your setup and you need to adjust some input settings or some output settings, then you would have to go and specifically change just those, but everything else would be pretty much the same. And other than that, I can't really think of any other situation that might call for doing this over and over and over and over again, unless your PC is screwed up and it's giving you problems constantly. If it is, then you're going to have to look at the, the hardware or the OS. That in itself is just a, a complete crap show. So good luck with that. That's probably going to take a while. Let's see here. Once you get to the point where you're going to go into Audacity and start your recording, then you have to make sure, are you choosing your proper inputs, which are your mics? and your outputs. You hit record and that's it. Save your project, back up your recording. You can save out your audio recording as an MP3 and you know, just take it from there. Now, here's some problems that we've noticed with our mics, Audacity and Firefox and the PC. So these are specific situations that you might come across. And so we're just mentioning this so it can be of help to whoever's running into these same problems. With the mics, Sometimes it seems that they work best in this order. You turn on your computer, you plug in your mic, then you turn on your mic and make sure the system recognizes everything. Again, sometimes we've noticed that the mics are getting a little flaky and it shows, uh, it flickers a uh, red and green light on and off constantly. And it shouldn't be doing that. It should just be green when everything is good. So, And we've also had the problem of it giving us a little bit of feedback or a little bit of a static in the background for some reason. And all we did was a, like a, a reset of the computer and redid everything of plugging it back in, turning the computer on, plugging it back in and going through those steps again and everything just works out fine. Well, I think your neighbor was saying that uh, he thinks that the USB mics that we have, their signal is running too hot, which means um, they're too powerful, that it's affecting the recording through the mixer that we picked up. So if we do a recording, you can hear like a buzzing or a whining in the background. And that's pretty much at any recording level. So the master volume or the individual mic input volume, if, you know, we, we tried working with those, seeing how far we could get with cleaning up the signal. But at the end of the day, we were stuck. And um, he said that it was a pretty good bet that it was the, the newer mics working with the older mixer. That and he's actually going to figure he's going to figure out the problem. It's just again this whole this whole uh, coronavirus thing. He can't come over. He can't take a look at it. I can't get over to his place. So as soon as this all clears up, we'll fix up that whole mixer problem and be able to use it properly again. The next point was using two USB mics at the same time with Audacity, and you can do this easily or pretty easily. 
when the mics are from different manufacturers. If they are from the same manufacturer, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. They still show up, but you have to use a method which pans one mic to the left channel and one mic to the right channel in a stereo recording in Audacity. And the stereo channel recording option in Audacity uses two channels. Therefore, you can use one to go right and one to go left. And then that would separate the two mics into their own separate track. Also with Audacity, let's see here, going down my list, if all your equipment works, the hardware and the software, then sometimes Audacity itself gets a little flaky and you need to kick it in the pants and you can do this by restarting Audacity. You can select your desired input and output options again through the settings bar in Audacity and also check that the proper settings you want are selected under edit preferences. Then you can look at your devices, playback and recording tabs. Make sure everything is set up there. I talked about the mic acting up. If it's flickering red and green, shut it down, shut down Audacity, unplug the mic, turn it off, plug it back into the computer, turn it on, reopen Audacity and try again. You might also have to restart a new Audacity file project as well. It all depends. And sometimes you might even have to restart your computer. That would be the extreme where you just have to start from scratch and then restart your whole process. But that only takes like a minute or two, so it's not too bad. If the recording in Audacity doesn't work properly or the settings aren't sticking, close Audacity, close everything down, restart your computer, and then follow the best practices troubleshooting that we mentioned previously. Now, when you get to the podcast host, internet, electricity, power cables, you might have some issues there as well. And here are some considerations that you should be looking at. Like I said before, your faulty power cables could be causing problems with your PC, your audio interface device. Okay, so that's something to look out for. I've heard of people having issues with their electricity, your electrical outlet, the shielding on your audio equipment. Any of these could be affecting your recording quality. So you could be hearing buzzing, whining, hissing. You have to look out for that as well. Is your internet working properly? Are you getting the proper speeds? Is there any static in your signal, especially if you're using a DSL connection? I mean, I don't know with cable or fiber or any of whatever the heck they're using these days here. If it's going through your phone line, sometimes there's static or there's problems with the signal on your phone line. And that could be affecting your recording with online services through your DSL service. That's something else to keep in mind. Is your podcast host service up and running properly? Usually they have a status reminder through a blog or maybe they have a, um, a page where they give updates constantly. So you have to check that out. Is your account experiencing any issues? Does your podcast plan have all the features you need and are they enough to suit your needs? How many episodes you can have up at any given time or how many hours they give you to start off with? How much file space you're allowed? They might have uh, size or space restrictions for show notes comments. You might not get full control over your podcast web address. You might not get full control over modifying your podcast page themes, artwork, banners, header images, etc. Those are a few other things to watch out for as well. Then it goes on to, are you allowed to monetize with your plan? Can you share your episodes automatically to all your social media channels? Do you have to manually do everything yourself and submit your podcast RSS feed to podcast carriers individually or does your podcast host and your specific plan handle all that so normally yes what we're talking about here is the rs feed is to get your podcast out to the different platforms so we're talking about apple uh, podcasts we're talking about google podcasts uh, we're talking about um, podcast addict um, and a whole bunch of other ones so what you really have to do is look into each individual one and submit them individually and you would just basically go up into your settings in your in your um, podcast host it'll give you your rss feed link and you would just copy that link and paste it into the rss feeds um, uh, subscription into each additional uh, podcast host that you want to submit it to so once you actually submit it to apple podcasts and google podcasts the internet actually scrapes um, those those um, hosts 
for podcasts to pick up on. So the chances are that your podcast is actually going to get picked up without you having to manually submit it if uh, you're only submitting it to uh, Apple Podcasts. But what we did is we actually manually submitted it to each different one. Um, and then that way we know for sure that it is on there and that it is available to the different ones that people are actually using. The next area that you should probably be looking at is does your podcast host have good support? Do they answer your emails quickly and do they fix the issues that you're having? Because if they don't, what's the point then? You know, And I can say like the host that we're with has been actually pretty good with getting back to us and answering questions that we might have had. So our host has actually been pretty good with us. I also wanted to mention that if you do have some sort of automatic function where it takes your RSS feed from your podcast host and then sends it out to all the other carriers out there, that it would probably need access to all your individual accounts. So that's something else to consider as well. I mean, if you're all worried about security and stuff like that, that's up to you to decide how you want to do things. You can do it manually yourself, or you can just have the system that you're using do it all for you. But again, you would have to give control over to the system to accomplish that. Next, Firefox. So for example, if you're going to be using online services to do your recording, for example, we tried Zencaster. If your PC is in good shape, everything is working fine and your mic setup and everything functions properly, you have to complete the setup by making sure that you give these online services access to your functioning setup. And usually you can do that by going through your tools, options. Um, this is in Firefox, by the way, privacy and security tabs. You would have to make sure that your browser privacy is it's usually set to standard for most of these online services because if you restrict it enough, then things tend not to work properly. Your history is usually turned on. Your permissions are usually turned on for your microphone, your notifications, your autoplay. All that stuff is set to allow. Do not block pop-up windows, things like that. You basically have to keep everything in default mode and that cuts down a lot of the issues. For example, if you log into Zencaster, you double check your settings by clicking the security lock in Firefox's web address search bar. And then you would click the lock, click the arrow next to it, and then it goes to a green connection secure window and you click on more information. And then you can access permissions and just go through everything that you need to to make sure the online service is working properly. There are other factors that you might have to look into that might be affecting your recording through, for example, in this case, Zencaster. And there was one that they mentioned where if your mic rate, so for example, I think they wanted 44,100 hertz. They basically said to keep that rate the same for your web browser and your mic. So everything's the same because they said if uh, one of them is different, that might cause problems with recording or feedback or maybe the recording dropping out and things like that. So what I was saying before was if you need to use these online services, sometimes you have to allow your web browser to interact with those services. By that, I mean you have to make sure that the browser privacy is set to basic you have to usually make sure that your autoplay is set to allow for audio and video. Also, store data in persistent storage is pretty important because that's come up before using Zencaster. So we that won't allow you to record. If that's not set properly, you will not be able to record any podcasts. Okay, so usually it's set to default, but we had to uncheck default and put it to allow. And then also using the microphone, you have to make sure it's not on default mode and you have to set it for allow. Now, once everything's right with the rest of your settings in Firefox, all your hardware is working properly, everything is being recognized. Everything should be good to go. But as we've learned time and time again, there's always something that pops up. So know your stuff inside and out. Make sure you can troubleshoot because, for example, let's say if you have to go somewhere and uh, record an interview at a guest's location and things aren't working properly and you can't get it fixed, then it comes off looking amateurish. I mean, if it's out of your control, that's one thing. But if you're just fumbling around trying to figure out your settings or your levels, that's never a good look. So make sure you got all your stuff in order before you begin. You know, you don't want to be wasting somebody's time 20 minutes, half an hour just to figure out what's going on. Now, the best option is to actually use this stuff to record, but you also want to make sure you have a backup with you 
uh, whether it's your phone, have something to back up so you don't lose that opportunity at that interview if you're out and your, your equipment isn't working. Um, again, if it's no fault of your own and you have to troubleshoot it and it takes a half an hour, they're going to lose interest in doing the interview. So make sure you always have a backup as well. I hope all of you are still awake right now because I know it was kind of boring to go through all the, the tech nerd stuff, but uh, it's really important and you need to make sure that you're on your game and you're aware of this all the time because, like I said, any little bit of this chain from the mic to the cables to the ports to the, the settings on the PC to Audacity to the online services, a whole bunch of things might not be working. One particular thing might not be working, so you have to really be on the ball and keep your eyes on things, especially if you're doing this by yourself. And again, this podcast is basically to help out new users and people who might be having problems right now just trying to figure their stuff out. They might be really good at the setup, but maybe not so much on the tech side and like troubleshooting the computer or the OS and things like that. So I think that's about it. Was there anything else, Director Austin, that you wanted to talk about? Because I think we covered pretty Pretty much everything that we needed to well the one thing i'm going to say very quickly is is that when we first started this podcast and we started talking on the mics we got very nervous get rid of that fear get rid of that anxiety and start doing your show and that's it we become pretty good at doing this no more nerves no more fear no more anxiety but just be yourself go on your show talk about what you're interested in and i think at one point you just don't give a crap anymore <laughs> and you yeah. just record whatever you feel like recording and yeah. that's it you know because ultimately it's the content with us, like we keep changing up our formats. We change up things here and there. We don't keep it the same all the time. And that's what I think makes our podcast a little unique. Yeah. I mean, sure, there's a lot of people that are probably doing the same things, but we try to add our own flavor to this mix and hopefully it's coming through our episodes. And uh, I think they're pretty good. Yeah. And we're both perfectionists too. So we want to get the best quality out of it. Uh, we want it to sound the best that it can. I'm an avid listener of podcasts on my uh, daily trek to work and home. So I know what the podcasts sound like. I know what the quality sounds like on other podcasts. We want to be able to match those. So if it comes off sounding better for you guys out there, then that's perfect for us. So Okay, let me ask you this, though. Since you don't have to do that trek in the car now, are you still listening to those podcasts? I'm curious. I, I do here and there, yeah. It depends oh, okay. on what episodes come out with uh, certain podcasts and which guests are on and stuff and what they're talking about. I still will listen to them if I uh, take my dog out for a walk. I bring my phone and my headset with me and, and off I go. But it depends on what people are actually talking about. Right now, the big thing and the big hotspot is COVID-19, of course. Of and, course, yes. Uh, I've heard so much about it that we've actually done three episodes on it. We so have, yes. <laughs> you, you know, you kind of don't even want to hear any more about it, but you do at the same time. So uh, yes, I'm still keeping up with some podcasts. And if any of you that are listening right now, if you haven't checked out our COVID-19 episodes, go have a listen. I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. We Absolutely. take a very unique look at things going on right now. And we just very published, interesting. we just put out part three. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really crazy. And most of the stuff that we were talking about in episode three is hitting the fan now. So yeah, it's getting pretty interesting and scary. We've got actually some uh, episodes in our back pocket right now that are ready to be released. Uh, our goal is right now, you don't want to release too many episodes at once. Uh, you want to have some stuff that you can release maybe once a week, twice a week, tops. Uh, I mean, the big guys are probably releasing one every day, um, but this is their full-time job, right? They have they have um, podcasts that are, you know, able to reach different celebrities, different sure. interviews, yeah. all that stuff where we still work our full-time jobs. And then this is our uh, side gig that we're doing right now. And you, you really want to have enough episodes to continue and carry you past uh, a couple of weeks. So we've withheld some episodes right now. Um, that we are going to be releasing probably about once a week right now. So uh, there are some very, very interesting episodes coming up. I got to say, though, when we first started off the podcast, I think we got to four or 500 episode topics that we could talk about. So I think we're good for quite a while. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got a lot to talk so, about. We've yeah, got nothing I, but time right now, right? So, I mean, we could talk every day and do uh, do a different episode every day. But again, we don't want to just go on 
and and shoot our mouths off and then put our foot in our mouth afterwards because we actually do sit down and do our research and we we make sure that we're getting the facts properly before we put out any of this information out right it's either from mm -hmm. personal experience or from our own personal research that we're doing online um, we're not just going to one source quoting one source and and taking that for the truth so go to different resources check it out, see if there's fact checks here and there, see if anything has actually come out that has been proven, scientific evidence, stuff like that. I can sit on my couch all morning and just read and read and read that these topics are false or they're true. We actually might have an episode coming up on conspiracy theories, and I've done a ton of research on this stuff, and there's yes, so many articles have. out there. So I really do want to talk about that stuff. But again, you have to do your research. Okay, wrap up time. All right, so we're going to wrap up this episode with that. For Master Impressive, I'm Director Awesome, and as always, be safe, be kind to each other, and we'll see you later. Here we go now! Play that beat! Pop Jerky. <laughs>